situation with Arsenal's midfield this season is going to be an interesting one with the likes of Matteo Genduzzi, Ainsley Maitland-Niles and possibly even Lucas Torreira likely to leave the club. It's going to be interesting to see how Arsenal replace these players. Of course, we've heard the big news around Thomas Partey being a very clear target to the Gunners. But if multiple players leave, it's arguable that Arsenal could be looking to further increase the numbers at the club. It's still whether to be seen or not uh, around Sabios and whether he joins us full time, or actually if Arsenal decide to go down a cheaper route to get someone else into the club. And that leads into today's show. Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series. This is a show in which we look at the players that have been linked to Arsenal, break them down statistically, analytically, and get the help of an expert to break them down even further. And today we are looking at Marseille French midfielder Morgan Sanson and looking into whether this guy is going to be someone that replaces his compatriot Matteo Guendouzi at the club. But there are other positions in Arsenal's midfield that certainly will need more reinforcements this season, it's fair to say. So before we crack on with things, please can you make sure you drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and turn those notifications on so you never miss a show. Now, interestingly, we've seen a lot of links uh, with our of, of Leon being linked, but actually I've seen more so recently with Morgan Sanson being a guy that Arsenal are possibly looking at more than his Leon compatriot. And, and for me, it's a weird one. But before I go into my reasons why I think it's a bit strange, I'm going to hand the reins over to our French expert. And there's always, always going to be a prediction about who this is going to be. And it, it, it doesn't take the biggest genius in the world to work out who the go-to man is in terms of French football. It's Mr. Jeremy Smith. In the last few years, first for Montpellier and then for Marseille, Morgan Sanson has, has proved himself a, a really good, um, reliable, very versatile uh, central midfielder. Um, he he joined Montpellier and then um, sort of excelled for them as more of an attacking midfielder. Um, but since he's joined Marseille, he sort of gradually moved back into a slightly more defensive role. Um, if you're being really, really flattering, you could arguably say a kind of Pirlo style number six who um, sort of sits quite deep but also directs play. But um, even as I'm saying that, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really convincing myself. Um, yeah, I think you know, to, to compare him to, to Pirlo is, is flattering in the extreme. He's, um, like I said, he can play anywhere in the midfield, sort of at the top of a diamond, at the bottom of a diamond, um, in, a, in a midfield two, um, whether it's sort of um, two, one of two defensive midfielders or in, a, in the middle of a 4-4-2. Um, he has shown himself to have um, quite a decent knack for sort of just appearing on the edge of the area, kind of David Platt or Frank Lampard style with, with good timing to, to finish off moves. So he's got a, a, a good long shot on him, um, very good passer of the ball as well. So certainly a, a good player for any squad to have. And he's been close to the France squad a few times. But... I think Liga is probably his level. Um, he's made no secret of the fact that he'd like to join um, the Premier League. Um, he's got he's brought in an agent with with very strong Premier League connections. Marseille have brought in um, Paul Aldridge, an English guy, to to try to broker deals for some of their players with the Premier League because they've got real money problems and are looking to offload players for arguably more than they're worth. And Sanson is one of the names that's come up a lot. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised at all to see him in the Premier League, but I have to admit that um, I would expect Arsenal to be looking for sort of higher grade players than him. He's been linked a lot with West Ham, Newcastle, Everton, and with all due respect to those teams, that seems more like a kind of Morgan Sanson fit than, than Arsenal. Um, but if you can get a good price for him, like I said, Marseille are trying to, bring in money quick so that they can so that they've got transfer funds to spend then I think he'd be a, a you know very good addition to the Arsenal squad he'll always do a job like I said he's versatile he's reliable but I'm not sure that if Arsenal are looking to kick on and 
um, look to Champions League football, even though he's helped Marseille to qualify for Champions League. If Arsenal are looking to, to get back to the very top, I'm not entirely sure uh, Sanson is the player for that. I tend to agree. Um, I think there's a couple of facets to this. First of all, thank you, Jeremy, uh, for giving us your expert insight. You can follow him on Twitter at JeremySmith98. The link will be in the description, of course, as well. The reason why I'm tentative uh, about writing off Sanson completely is because of this key word that we're going to get associated with Arsenal quite a lot over the coming weeks, and that's depth. Arsenal are going to need depth, and Arsenal are going to need players that are versatile, and Sanson gives you that versatility throughout the team in a number six, a six, eight, even a number eight. He plays in multiple positions across the pitch. And I want to prove that to you now by having a quick look at, of course, his statistics uh, and in particular his heat map, which you can see on the screen there. Um, and I want to just take that in for a moment because I'm going to show you Danny Ceballos's heat map, which I'll show you on the screen now. This is Danny Ceballos' heat map. You can see very, very similar if we flick between the two. Uh, of course, Ceballos covers more ground across the entire pitch, whereas Sanson tends to, to show more defensively on the left-hand side of the field, playing in a different system to what Arsenal have shown, of course, and Ceballos has had to play in multiple areas across the pitch due to being in a midfield two with Granit Xhaka. And you'd expect the Spaniard to also be playing more defensively in just a two than what Sanson has had to play for Marseille. However... What I'm seeing is, and I don't know if this is some sort of inkling to tell us that Danny Sabas is not going to be with us next season and Arsenal are looking at possible alternatives, but I think that Morgan Sanson presents as someone that could offer plenty of depth on top of Danny Sabas. Arsenal are going to need multiple players in multiple positions, especially if we're going to lose Genduzi and Torreira, etc. And Sanson, I think, pre presents as an example of a player that could certainly add depth to this team. You'll also see on the screen the attacking statistics. Now, while I can't show them in comparison on the same side uh, without taking a lot of your time up looking through y -Scout, um, for these stats, what I can do is do some quick comparisons. So in terms of the amount of goals that both he and Sabas have scored this season, Sanson is up there with five compared to Sabas' uh, two. And assist-wise, Sanson has three compared to Sabas' zero. So in terms of that, um graphic he offers a lot more in, in terms of a forward sense the amount of shots that he's taken we have a look at the shots that Sabah, uh, that Sanson has taken from across the pitch they're very central typically and actually a lot of them are from taken outside the box that's why he has a low shot percentage in terms of accuracy but Danny Sabas's percentage of accuracy is only 1.6 percent higher and most of those shots again are taken from outside the box his goals this season have of course come from mainly inside the box so far. I mean, all of them have. We think of the goal against Sheffield United as a great example of that. Whereas Sanson's goals have come from slightly further back, outside the box as well, but towards the edge of the outer rim of the area too. So, And he's done that with both feet, Sanson, this season with his right foot and his left foot. So that's a definite string to his bow that he adds to the team. If we have a look at the average amount of dribbles that he takes in each game, 4.34. And if we know Sabah, Sabah loves a dribble. And Sabas is only 2.94. So Sanson gives you that additional strength. Now, Sabas' success rate is a 55.6, which is, again, slightly lower than the dribble success rate of Sanson. Now, we have to think about this in comparison to what Jeremy said about his level being Liga, the Premier League being a step up. Those statistics would naturally, you'd expect to see, drop. However, that doesn't discredit that this guy is showing some really strong statistics in all of these areas offensive jewels is winning 43.7 percent of those and it's over 10 that he's making sabas wins slightly more 44.8 but he's only involved in 6.6 .6. if we have a look at the passing in fact before we have a look at the passing actually no i'll change my mind yeah we'll have a look at the passing the passing side of things um 84% passing accuracy, and if you compare that to Danny Sabas's, has 88. So he's slightly worse off in terms of his passing accuracy. Long passes, Sabas does way more, 4.57 to Sanson's 1.91, and Sanson has a lower accuracy in terms of that. Passes into the final third, though, his accuracy is pretty good, 72.1. But again, Sabas beats with an 82.5, and with nearly three times as many passes in that region of the field as well. Passes into the box, though, they're fairly similar uh, other than accuracy. They're both around 2, 2.26 for Sanson, 2.29 for Sabas. 
The only difference being that Sanson's accuracy is 40.6%, Sabas's is 58.7%. Again, it's, this is sort of showing you why it's really important that we get Sabayos in full time. But I'd like to see us sign both of these players to add depth into the team as well. If you're playing, say, against a, a side, say if you, we bring in a Thomas Partey, for instance, you've got the option there in a, a team that we're going up against, say, a, a Leeds or a Villa or a side that's further down the table that you expect them to be next season. You've got the option to play a Thomas Partey in the number six role and then put two number eights of Ceballos and Sanson together to give you that additional bite and creativity and verve in the midfield compared to, say, putting Xhaka and Partey in at the same time just to give you that added push and drive in the midfield that you're not necessarily going to get if you don't replace the players that we're losing and add on top of Ceballos with a player like Sanson. Looking at his passing specifically then uh, in terms of what you can expect to see on the pitch, you can see here um, that he likes his long passes, moving the ball from one side of the pitch to the other. He does that really relatively quite well. He does it in multiple matches, in multiple scenarios. He does that really well. But also creatively leading towards the assist that we see from him as well. This was an amazing assist uh, for Radonich against uh, Saint-Etienne. You can also see that I've marked Saliba on the pitch as well. So you know that this wasn't Saliba's fault for conceding this goal. But the, the vision and the back heel technique to pass this through to his, his, uh, his colleague on the left wing was brilliant. Um, completely wrong-footed for Saint-Etienne defender. Could be for Fana, wasn't quite sure. Um, moving into that position there. So really solid technique and vision and ability to find the pass in a really key moment. In terms defensively, if we look at that side of his game, because we know how much Sabas has done this season, Sanson is capable in, in a 6-8 type of role as well, playing slightly deeper, as Jeremy talked about. And he's shown that he can, he can win balls in key challenges in games. And that's really, really important from players to show that they can, in fact, win the challenges in deep positions on the pitch. So if we have a look at Sanson's defensive statistics... 8.61 joules in each game with a 58.6% uh, win rate is really strong. You compare that to Sabayos, so 7.98, slightly lower, and a 56.4% win rate, so slightly less in terms of the way he wins. So defensively, he's showing a little bit more than what we're seeing from Sabayos, but he's playing the more physical league, being Liga, uh, and naturally is, is built and has developed in a league that is, is sort of built on these physical games. Aerial duels uh, is very, very similar to Sabas, quite low. 1.34 for Sabas with a 29% win rate compared to Sanson's 2.12 and 30%. But if you have a look at the interceptions, this is a slightly worrying. 2.79 is relatively low for a centre midfielder that plays in quite a deep position. You compare that to Sabas, 3.74. So consider, I mean, one more per game, but it adds up to a hell of a lot over the whole of the season. So that's, for me, slightly concerning. And losses to recoveries is a very worrying stat. 10.31 losses to 4.76 recoveries. That is a very negative ratio. Compare that to Sabas. It's negative. It's 9.18 losses, but seven recoveries in each game. So he's closed that gap. For me, it, go, it gives you sort of that emphasis of how good Sabas is again. So... That's sort of the area of the game we're going to look at in regards to Sanson, giving you some sort of statistical analysis, look to some of the graphics, and of course got the expert info, uh, insight from Jeremy at Jeremy Smith 98 Please make sure you drop him a follow. Um, and that's going to wrap up the video in terms of the analysis. So let me know in the comment section below, is Sanson someone that you'd be interested in signing? He's been linked to the club over the recent days. Is he someone that you think could add depth to this side? Have you been watching him? What can you tell me more about him in the comment section below? But of course, please drop a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We hit 18,000 subscribers as well. A massive thank you to everyone that's been involved with the channel over the recent weeks and months. We've really smashed it so far, especially our expert members, Robert, Abdullah, Root, Grass, Afnan, a clarifier, Zamir, TD, Chris P, Ashwin, Owen, Mike, Cole, Gary, Matt from Dull Square to Wear, Jasmine, Olisola, Glenn, Mosaic, PMHK, Brian Robles, Jared, Aaron, and Alex. Thank you ever so much, all of you, for your support, as well as our Plus members and our TGT members as well. Thank you for your continued help with supporting the channel. You, I cannot put into words how much it's helped this channel to grow, to continue using stuff like Y Scout, paying for that, using the new hardware, the laptops, the microphones, the cameras, everything else. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm looking forward to the new season and, and building and getting this channel as, as, as far as it possibly can, believe it or not. So uh, I've enjoyed doing this show for you today. And it's been a little bit since we've done a tactical breakdown, so it's quite nice to get back to the usual thing. I'll see you again very, very soon. And as always, up the Arsenal.